It's Friday afternoon in Sydney, Australia, and that means it's time for Friday Beers with Mark and Stuart. I'm Stuart. I'm Mark. And we're the founders of Pitt Street Research. Mark, we're <laughs> holding a life Thank sciences conference on uh, uh, Thursday the 28th of November, and yep. th- uh, it's, it's filling up fast. Uh, we've, about, we've filled the room about 80% of the way, but there's still yep. room. We still have a few tickets left. Right. Uh, it was a sellout back in May when we did Right. We'll, we'll, we'll put some, some video of what the uh, yeah. attendee list looked like for that one. So, yeah, huge, uh, huge queue. Right. Um, so uh, we, we, did, we were expecting something similar this time around, but it's for, for life sciences. Very uh, interesting companies coming. Right. So we, we're going to put uh, our contact details up uh, below the screen there. Um, uh, we've got Farmost, uh, Anatara, Canpel, Envision, a range of life sciences companies uh, with a focus on uh, animal health and, and uh, veterinary biotech. Tell them about our keynote. And uh, the keynote is Rick Holiday-Smith. Uh, he is the chairman of the Australian Stock Exchange. So not every day you get the chairman of the ASX to come, no. out, and, come out and speak. So we're very lucky. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Rick. Uh, Rick's a big proponent of, uh, of healthcare and life sciences in Australia, serves on the board of Cochlear. Um, he's also uh, a, a chairman of a, a privately held biotech, which has got a lot of potential, called QBiotics. Uh, so he'll be talking about some of his uh, uh, views on, on how to better promote the uh, life sciences sector in Australia. So uh, save the date, Thursday the 28th of November here in Sydney for our uh, an annual um, uh, Pitt Street Research Baker McKenzie Life Science Conference. All right. Research. Yes. We've had a lot of it Absolutely. In, the, in the past couple of weeks. All right. So, so ECT and, and Prospect Resources. Yeah. So Prospect Resources. Um, the price of lithium is beginning to make a recovery, and that's great for Prospect Resources. Uh, they've got a large uh, hard rock lithium play in uh, in Zimbabwe, uh, with a pretty significant resource and a, and uh, according to the feasibility study, pretty low cost base. So worth paying attention to that one. Now ECT is very interesting. Uh, they're one of the um, uh, uh, clean coal companies. They've got a way of converting uh, low value uh, brown coal into better value um, uh, uh, like black coal. And they've got a few ideas about how they're going to commercialise that one. Uh, check out our research for more details. Mark, tell us about the Webit research we published. Yeah, Webit, um, semiconductor development company, uh, specifically ReRAM. Uh, and uh, yeah, so they've been developing this for, for a number of years, but we're getting closer to commercialization. So they're working with a few few partners in, in Asia, uh, well, semiconductor so. companies. And uh, yeah, we'll, we're expecting commercialization to start next year. So that report is out as well. And then we did a few interviews, one with the Global Health and uh, one with uh, Aguia Resources. Also, uh, yeah, we think we push it out through uh, social media. So yeah, a big, uh, big two weeks for uh, on the research side. Yes. Mark, you and I were talking about uh, your controversial um, contrarian play of the week. You're telling me that Afterpay is dropping into the uh, deep value zone. Well, I wouldn't call it deep value. Right. What, what I think is um, has, has happened is a lot of um, negative negativity recently. But right. if you look at what they announced a couple of days ago, yeah, just for the, for the for the viewers who don't know about Afterpay, talk to us about what this company. Yeah, it's had. a buy now, pay later type uh, arrangement where you can go in a store and right. buy something and pay in four. Which re- reminds me of the joke installments. I was told like, How many uh, Afterpay shareholders does it, does it take to change a light bulb? I don't know. Four, one for each installment. <laughs> <laughs> well, basically, yeah, it's four installments or you know several installments. You, you pay pay back you know what you right. uh, what you bought. Right. Um, so the the good thing is they announced they've got you know fifteen thousand new uh, customers signing on each day in the in the month right. of October. Right. Nine thousand of those in in the US. Right. A lot of them millennials. Millennials. Millennials actually have money. Yeah, some of them do. <laughs> so, so uh, presumably they have to pay their um, uh, their uh, toasted avocado. Exactly, right. yeah, avocados and, uh, and other <laughs> millennial stuff. Right. Um, so yeah, so it's it's good news, it's strong growth. Uh, the negativity was around maybe you know the growth in Australia that's sort of tapering off. But okay. um, with all due respect, Australia is not the main game for for have to pay right. long term. It's right. all about the US and, and other markets, and uh, it's just in the US. It's a huge market. Right. It's. Uh, a land grab still to you know going on right now so um it's it's it, there's a lot of bullish stuff to talk about but there's been negativity you know recently with with why stack right. uh, that sort of hammered a lot of tech stocks ubs came out with a negative with a sell report right um, and, and there's been some sort of investigation about violations of uh, anti-money laundering provisions yeah right? and anti-money laundering and, so and, uh, anti-terrorist financing as well yeah, I mean, look, terrorists like to buy clothing as well, right? Uh, and presumably they've got no money now that their usual sources of supply have been cut off. Yeah, so right. Afterpay is probably a great way to do that. Yeah, right? bomb now, pay later. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, so 
positives, negatives, sh share price come down quite a bit from 35 to around 28. It's it's uh, popped up a little bit after the uh, the, the good news. Right. Um, but really, it, it's a land grab in the U.S. still. So there will be more competition there. But they just got a, an equity injection, 200 million from right. the U.S. fund. Um, and that will help them in, in this whole land grab thing. And I, I think if you look at the valuation, we've done our, our homework. We'll put it up on screen. Um, at EV EBITDA of 96, you know, a lot of people will freak out right. for, for 2020. Right. Um, and if you compare that to your more traditional sectors, it's huge. Right. But we're uh, talking about probably one of the more disruptive developments in retail sure. since, since e-commerce was invented, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And so it's 96 for, for, this, uh, for 2020, for the year after, uh, 48. So that's, you can, you know, a lot of people say that's, that's huge, but we've argued before you need to relate this to EBITDA growth. Right. right? So if you look at EBITDA growth for next year, 165%. You know, on you know, the average uh, analyst numbers, right, eighty six percent a year after. So, and then what we like to do with these sorts of companies that appear extremely expensive is look relate that EV EBITDA to EBITDA growth, Sim similar to the peg ratio, yep. price earnings to growth. Yep. yep. If you do that, um, after pay touch zero point five eight uh, for twenty twenty. That's true. That's uh, and then 0.56 for the year after. And right. you know, on average, you know, if you're around one, is considered neutral. Above one, is, you know, the higher you get is, is expensive. But at these levels, it's extremely cheap well, in my, my view. What impresses me is this company has come from nowhere. It, it's barely four years old in terms of the platform operating in Australia. And it's taken the entire market by storm. It, it, yeah. what, what can it achieve when it moves to really big markets? Well, they've got you know they've got two hundred million extra in in the um, in the bank right now. Right. So and that should facilitate that land grab. And I think looking out twelve months, I think this stock can go about forty for right. sure, and, and maybe even reach fifty. So that's sort of my call for the next twelve months on Afterpay. So that's why we really like it. Uh, yeah. So let me tell you something else that I think is set to to light the world up again, and that's lithium. Okay. I talked a moment ago about uh, 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 Prospect Resources, the hard rock lithium play we just um, we just uh, initiated on. Uh, lithium's had a tough 2018, early 2019. The perception was there was too much of it right. in, in the world. Uh, on our numbers, the world will need five times as much lithium by 2030 as it does now. Now, that's an awful lot of um, supply that needs to come on to, to meet that gap. But, right. but uh, in the meantime, there's probably been a little bit too much of it. I've noticed since about August, the prices seem to be stabilizing. Right. Uh, 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 and um, should this uh, trade war that's going on uh, it, it, between the US and China at the moment ease back a bit, I think it'll it'll be another excuse to uh, right. to get into that metal, to, to bet on uh, on the world's fastest yeah. growing sustainable. And I think we're, we're seeing that already, right? Right. So a bit of a relief. And right. Of course, there's no deal yet, but right. just on the back of that, this week we saw equity doing well. Yes. Equity doing well, and yes. then you know bonds coming off a bit. Yes. So. I mean, yeah, that's, that could be a good play if you think you know, the, the trade tensions will ease further right. online. Right, right, right. All right. So, Stu, what are we drinking today? Yeah, so this is a hazy little thing. Uh, it's an IPA from uh, Sierra Nevada Brewery in California. Not bad, but it didn't really shoot the lights out for me. Uh, Sorry. Right. I, I, I thought uh, they, they could have been hopped up a bit more. And then it would be um, it would be worth drinking. I wouldn't call it a lager in, right. in terms of taste, but right. it's uh, it's definitely not it, to the, uh, the it, traditional. It had taste. a lagerish kind of feel about it, which is unusual given it's a, it's, it's an ale. It's a, so all right, so so Sierra Nevada needs to do its rethink on how to do a good yeah. IPA. All right, that's a sell for us. <laughs> <laughs> that's all we have time for, unfortunately. Have a great week, investors, and uh, and good luck next week.